Joining us right now on Texans Radio, offensive line coach James Campin. Coach, how's it going out there during OTAs during this off-season practice period of time? Uh, it's going well. It's uh, it sure is nice to see faces and not be on Zoom like last year. And uh, this has been really good. Uh, it's been it's been terrific having the guys here. Coach, what's the focus for you during OTAs? We hear coaches say all the time, head coaches in particular, well, it's seven on seven. If you're even doing that, you don't have pads on because that's going to come until training camp. What's your focus for these guys during OTAs and mini camp at this point? Um, you know, I think it's just, you know, everyone getting a, a strong knowledge of the offense, uh, the conceptual uh, deal and, and understanding the plays and the different schemes that, that defenses will employ on us. And then obviously, uh, the fundamental, the fundamental footwork and hand placement, those things uh, are easily accomplished without having pads on. And, and you have to take advantage of those times now with the differences in rule changes and whatnot. And so um, you know, have to be a little creative, think out of the box and, and create drills and put them in positions uh, to get those fundamental uh, behaviors together. Coach, it strikes me that offensive linemen might not enjoy that as much as actually hitting other human beings. So <laughs> when they get to camp, they're probably a lot more interested. Well, that's probably a bad word, but excited about doing that sort of thing. Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, I think excited is a better better way of, of it's like, wow, we really get to execute these things, these drawings and and. And, you know, and put things to application. It is a lot more fun for linemen when it gets to that point. Um, but, you know, I mean, heck, we're, uh, they always said we're mushrooms and just put us in the dark and feed us and we're growing. And, and so really for linemen, we, we, anything new is exciting. So. Uh, Coach Two-Parter, are you going to get fined for doing this interview, by the way? Is that still happening in offensive line rooms? Um, you know, I, I, I would probably, I would say, yes, I think that's kind of a universal thing. I, uh, I'm sure every time uh, we speak or they speak, you get fined. I'm sure. Coach, when you take on a different role, when you come in and you have not maybe seen these guys, maybe seen them on TV at some point when there's a game on, when you're doing work, it's maybe on in the background, but do you just jump in and watch all 16 games from last year to get a read on everybody or do you just kind of leave that in the past because techniques are different, schemes different, or how do you attack that when you step into that role about getting understanding of what's already here and what you need to get better on that offensive line? Yeah, you know, that's a that's a really good question. I've never been asked that. And, uh, uh, you know, you do watch all the tape. And um, I think if you don't watch the tape, you try not to watch the scheme and those things because um, that can change from year to year. But you certainly want to, you know, look at the traits of each lineman get to know them, um, you know, on film and what they're capable of doing at this time. And then also then you can then, uh, you know, kind of make different drills for individuals. Some, not every drill is applicable to everybody. So I think that's important, but I also think it's important to go back and watch all the training camp and the evolution of the player. So uh, for myself, I go all the way back to, you know, their, their training camp, watch their drills, what their individual periods look like. So I can see what they've been taught and what their movements are prior to just watching a game day. Offensive line coach James Campin with us on Texans Radio. Coach, I've asked this question of offensive linemen and coaches, but I wanted to get your response. Is this, and if it is so, why is this the closest position group on the team? And why is the closeness important on and off the field with this group? You know, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, it's a, it's a really neat dynamic to be a part of a group. Um, you know, as a former player, it's a, it's a, it, it, st it stays with you forever. It doesn't really matter what, um, you know, when you retire from football, then you know, you know, linemen, you're, oh, he played offensive line. You're, you obviously gravitated, just like it's, a, it's an extended family, if you will. Um, um, but, it, you know, it, I don't know how those dynamics happened. I'm glad that I'm a part of it. It's, it's a neat fraternity to be in, um, but I'm not so sure where, where it happened. And I mean, the importance of it is I think for any dynamics of a team is you, you know, you have to lose yourself in order to find yourself in the makeup of a team. And I think that that just gets accelerated in an offensive line room. Um, we spend a lot of time alone in meetings, whereas like um, perimeter, 
uh, all the perimeter being there watching with the quarterbacks and watching route details and things of this nature. We'll have smaller meetings with the tight ends or running backs, you know, and blocking and those things. So I, I think maybe sometimes that's just developed in the fact that we're, we are by ourselves frequently. You know how you know you're talking to an offensive line coach is that they refer to running backs, wide receivers, and quarterbacks not as skill position, but as perimeter players. I love it, Coach. That's great stuff. <laughs> you okay. got that right. <laughs> yeah, you know that. Coach, how did your years as a head high school coach help you become a better professional coach in the future? Uh, tremendous amount of gratitude that I was able to be a head coach at my former high school. And, you know, I love Ponderosa high school always will. And, you know, I think that your patience, you know, everything isn't just going to come just because someone is drafted higher or as a free agent really doesn't matter. The professional athletes, you know, the expectation is obviously there for them to perform at a high level, but it is too in the high school level as well. But you get to see players that, um, you know, a lot of times a freshman or a sophomore guy who who struggles a little bit, all of a sudden he has a growth spurt, and all of a sudden now he's a really good player in any position. And you guys, oh, my goodness, now all of a sudden he's an all-league player when you didn't think that he would even be playing the sport. And I think so with patience, uh, that, that helps a lot, I think, in a transition to this level because, um, you know, it's all new. It's new for them. The expectation is extremely high, but – when we're asking them to try different things, to do different things, when they've had three or four years of doing it at college and their high school, it can be a little overwhelming at times. So I think patience and understanding is, is a big help at this level. Coach, the first preseason game is at Lambeau Field, where you spent time as a player and a coach. I'm sure it's not your first trip back, and you probably don't have time for any big reunion or anything, but what's that like to go back to Lambeau Field for you? Um, actually, it will be my first time back. And wow. um, yes, it will be. So um, it, it's uh, it's a special place, you know, there. And, uh, you know, I, I, I will see how that that goes. We're going there for a purpose to to, uh, you know, win every game that you put your pads on, in my opinion, and and perform well and take advancements and steps towards, the, you know, the season. It's a preseason game, but it's competitive and you want to win those and and play well. But um, as far as me personally, I, I, I don't, I, I think I'd have to answer, answer that question after I, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. it's going, it's going to be different, obviously going from a different locker room. Will you, so like, will you ride a bike? And did you ride a bike <laughs> when you were a player? Was that around that bike tradition? Yes, I did. I had the same kid for five years. I sure did. Wow. And it was oh, that's very, awesome. Yeah. And it was very interesting. My, Second year back as a coach, which would be their 2005 season. I was there in 2004, yeah, 2005. A young man came up and uh, asked for a picture. And he was sitting and, you know, we'd walk down as coaches and there was a saying, can we take it right here on this sign? I said, sure. And I, so he took the picture and his friend took the picture. He goes, What's the significance of this? And he said, he handed me an eight by 10. It was the kid who rode, I rode his bike. And he was, oh, wow. uh, he was, a grad, he just started his first year as a grad assistant at uh, Wisconsin Whitewater. And he wanted to get the picture at the same sign all those years back. And then he gave me one and we signed each other's picture. It was very cool. Very neat experience. That's, that's really cool. I can imagine Max Sharping has probably bent your ear a little bit, having you know, <laughs> lived in Green Bay and been a Packers fan. Oh yes. But, but along those lines, coach, I think a lot has been, been made of your career in Green Bay and the fact that, you didn't have a bunch of, of first round picks, you know, David Bakhtiari, you know, TJ Lines. you got, a, you know, players that were a little bit later rounds, but then you grew and developed them and cultivated their talent. What was the key and what is the key to getting the most out of your guys, whether they're seventh round picks or first round picks, what's the key to cultivating that talent? Well, I think, I think first it's the, it's, you know, it's the environment and, and the culture. And I know that that's what we're, we're striving for here is to create that culture, competitiveness, um, you know, consistency, being accountable. And I think when you have those type of players, it doesn't really matter where they're drafted, to be honest with you, or how you acquire them. I, I think once they, you know, the room has adopted that philosophy, it, it pretty much runs itself, you know, and, and, and I, and I believe we're on the pace for that here. 
um, with the group we have here. And, and so um, all those players that you mentioned are, were very, very good players, um, you know, but they, they had that it factor as far as they wanted to work, they wanted to get better. Um, you know, you're flat. You got to be flexible. I think with players nowadays, I, I, I don't believe in everything's a cookie cutter sheet to say we're all going to do this drill or that drill. I think you have to be specific once the team is honed down, you know, and right now we do a lot of drills that are, that are similar, um, you know, footwork and basics. You have those basics, but I think, you know, you have to step out and allow players as long as it's within the structure of the concept of the offense and in the belief mechanisms that coach Cully has for us, if they fit that, then we can take time to say, hey, look, this works better for you than it might work for the center player. So let's try it. And so I think that that the fact that they're open to try those things helps all of us. I hate to go retro again, coach, but I have one more on Green Bay, and I just got to know because I okay. think you were there as a player when the Magic Man was at QB, and then Favre comes in. What was that transition period like for you? Uh, it was it, it was uh, it was very sudden and quick, you know, when when Magic got hurt and then Brett came in and, um, you know, I was fortunate enough that I, I've had snapped the ball to really good quarterbacks. I mean, he and Brett were excellent quarterbacks and Brett was young, of course. And uh, those are those are interesting stories. And you wouldn't have enough time on this pot, on this cast to hear all those. And uh, I, I, I will protect my friend Brett and myself from any stories that no, but we had a lot of fun in those days. We had a, we had a lot of fun. Yes. All right. How's the transition to Houston going for you? Uh, very well, in? very well. You know, I, I uh, you know, the, the weather's different, obviously you get from extreme cold to extreme heat, but uh, I was fortunate enough, I, you know, and I was with the saints and I played at Tulane that uh, I've had about five years of this stuff and six years. And so um, I don't think you ever get used to extreme cold or extreme heat. You do, you learn to adapt and drink more water. That's probably a good thing. We, we promise not every winter will be like last winter, but the summer is yeah. consistent. Good. Coach, th thanks so much for being with us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet. Nice. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice to meet you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.